thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Daniel chapter 9, especially in verses 20 to 23, where we read that Daniel is confessing his sins, the sins of his nation to God. We read that God answers his prayer quickly and that he is highly favored of the Lord. My friends, when we pray to the Lord, I think a special prayer I find in my life that I know God hears is the confession of sin. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 tells us that God is high and lifted up, but he's also close to those who have a broken and contrite heart. In Psalm 51, King David, after his rendezvous with uh, Bathsheba, was convicted by the Holy Spirit and wrote this penitent psalm. And in Psalm 51 verse 17, the scriptures tell us that a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Often in our prayer lives, I kind of look at my own life too. We look at God as a genie in a bottle. I remember a show when I was a kid called I Dream of Genie. And in the show, the guy would rub a, bo rub a bottle and a genie would pop out and do whatever the master said for her to do. And a lot of times we think God is like that a genie in a bottle. We just rub the bottle, he comes out and does whatever he, we want him to do. Quite often we know the Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our dear Savior gave us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We say that in our hearts, in our words, but sometimes we really want our wills to be done. We want the God to conform to our will. Our prayers to the Lord are precious in his eyes and his ears, but 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 tells us that God will only answer the prayers that we give to him that are according to his will. We need to remember who God is. God is eternal. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 tells us that a thousand years is like a day to the Lord, and a day is like a thousand years. Recently, an actor, a well-known actor by the name of Kirk Douglas died, died at the age of 103. And we say, what a long life that is. And in an earthly sense, yeah, that is a long life. He was born, actually, I believe, when World War I was still going on. But to God, it's just a drop in a bucket. It's a vapor that comes out of your mouth. Like right now, I'm in the woods here where I live. It's cold. When it's cold and you blow air, you see a little vapor, and then it slowly disappears. That's how our life is to God. As I said, I'm in this little wooded area not too far from where I live, but I am just in this little area. God is, we are told by scriptures in Psalm 50, verse 10, God owns all the beasts in the field and the cattle on a thousand hills. He is eternal. He owns everything. We are just finite human beings. But yet, when we pray to God, we think that he's the genie in the bottle. Comes out and does what we want him to do. Let us follow the example of Daniel. When we know who God is and who we are, we should be confessing our sins. We should be lowly, meek, humble before the Lord. I love the parable our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14 there's a pharisee and a tax collector they both come to the temple praying the pharisee god i'm not like this guy over here i tithe i fast i do this i do that everything is i i i the tax collector comes and says god be merciful to me a sinner that man went home justified we're told in the scriptures God is close to the broken and contrite in heart. Our prayer lives should be remembering who the Lord is and who we are. Being thankful to God for sending his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Being humble and meek before our fellow man. Oftentimes, you often hear me say this, it's a little saying I have, but we look at the sins of others under a microscope, but our own sins with a telescope. And what I mean by that is we look at the sins of others very, very closely. We're very quick to judge others. The rap singer with his pants halfway down his back. The politician who has a bad mouth. The businessman who's corrupt. And maybe all that is true. But the first person we need to look at when we want to judge is the person you see in the mirror in the morning. 
Feel free to share today's devotional video, my brothers and sisters, today. And let us remember, as Daniel chapter 9, verse 23 tells us, that we are precious in the sight of the Lord. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 tells us that we are children of God. And when we come to Christ, as 1 John 3, 1 tells us, the world is not going to understand us. I have a little book I've kept for many, many years. It's about 30, 35 years old, a phone book of hundreds and hundreds of people, literally hundreds of people I knew growing up in the streets, clubs, bars. They're all gone. When you come to Christ, the things of this world are going to grow strangely, strangely dim. The world's going to hate you. For John chapter 15, verses 18 to 19 our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, The world's going to hate you, but it hated me first. But I have chosen you out of the world. So when you come to the Lord, yes, you are precious in his sight. But the world is not going to understand you. But we're not here to please people. We're here to please God. The middle verse in the Bible, Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to put your trust in God than your confidence in people. So let us remember, as we saw the prayer life of Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 to 23, we are precious in the sight of the Lord, but our prayers should be to be penitent of our sins and the sins of others, confessing them to the Lord. God bless you all this day, my friends. Stay strong in the Lord. If you see this devotional video on YouTube, as God leads you, you'll see a subscribe button on the bottom. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube page as we get the Word of God out together. To all my dear brothers and sisters in Christ on Facebook, thank you for sharing these devotionals to your pages and groups and friends. Take care this day. God bless you all.